from Sir St. Luke, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, Lord. And when some were speaking about the temple and how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not that astray. For many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. And when you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first. But the end will not follow immediately. And then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and plagues. And there will be dreadful portents, and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. They will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish by your endurance. You will gain your souls. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated and let us pray. Father God in heaven, as we close this liturgical church year and move into Advent, we are faced with the, the truth of the way things have become changed in our lives and in the world. We also know that that this life does not go on forever and things will take place that maybe we are not prepared for at this time. But Lord God, you tell us to persevere, to endure, to live stable lives and continue to be present for you, for one another, and for ourselves and keep our faith in you. Lord God, as we face those times, as the stones of our temples have come down and been destroyed, let us rebuild our lives in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We may not like it. We may deny it. We may resist, but the reality is things are changing. Our world is changing. The church is changing. Our lives, our very lives are changing. Sometimes those changes are welcome. But there are days when change brings about loss or the fear of loss. There are days when our life is forever changed. The world is different and nothing is like it used to be. And you and I know those days so well. We can tell each of us tell stories about those things. There are stories about perhaps the death of a loved one, a diagnosis, a divorce. A business that failed. A job that was lost. There are stories about the day you realized life as, as you were living was not perhaps the life that you wanted. They were stories about the day that someone confronted you with your addiction. They are about the days that you became the parent and caretaker perhaps of your own parents. There are stories of dreams and hopes that never came true. These are the days when the temples of our lives have come down and fallen. It is not just our individual temples, however. As a parish here at St. Mark's, we are having to face the stark reality that our church is changing. If everyone here this morning, and more importantly, if everyone who is not here this morning don't start becoming more involved in the life of this church at St. Mark's Lutheran. Things will never be like they used to be. Nor can they continue to be the way they are. Or can they be the way we would like to see them in the future. 
the temples of our schools are falling. For many people, the Lutheran Church may no longer be the church that they remember from years past. It is not like it used to be when they were growing up. Things have changed. As a country, our attitude towards others is not like it used to be. We can no longer count on investments growing in the bank like they used to. And globally, we read of wars and plagues and famines. Nations have risen up against nations. Kingdoms have risen up against kingdoms. Those of one race and or ethnicity have risen up against others of another race and or ethnicity. And even religions have risen up against religions. Security and peace and diplomacy have given way to fear and violence and terrorism. Temples are falling all around us. And we all have temples, don't we? Some have been given to us. Others, we have built ourselves. Sometimes our temples are people. Sometimes our temples are places. Sometimes they are values. Sometimes they are beliefs. Institutions and dreams. And regardless, they are the things that we, we think actually should place structure in our lives in order our lives give meaning and identity, security and stability. At least we think they do. Until those temples begin to fall. In today's gospel, some were speaking about the temple of Jesus. It's beautiful stones and the gifts dedicated to God. It was all about the temple that structured that community. It gave identity and meaning. It was the center of Jewish life. Jesus looked at it and said, The days will come and when not one stone will be left standing upon another. And all will be thrown down. And Jesus is speaking about more than just the physical temple in Jerusalem in this passage. The Jerusalem temple includes every temple that you and I continue to build in this very present day. And so what do we do about that day when our temples begin to fall? Change has a way of pushing us into the future, doesn't it? Many people will begin looking for signs about the future. What will happen now? What will I do? How, how do I get through this? And if we're not careful, we will soon be living in a future that we do not yet have, nor a future that we want for our children after ourselves, or for the future for ourselves. And that is not Jesus' response. When Jesus describes things that will happen, he's not asking us to speculate about the future, sisters and brothers. He is offering us signs that call us to be faithful, and to be present. Sometimes after our temple falls, we look for a scapegoat. Someone to blame or even demonize. And so we blame the Muslims for violence in the world. We blame gay people for the conflict within the church. The Democrats blame the Republicans. The Republicans blame the Democrats. They blame each other, as do the conservatives and liberals. We look for someone or a group who does not think or act or believe like we do. But that's not Jesus' response. Some people will simply give up and walk away. They walk away in despair. They can see nothing. All is lost and the situation is hopeless. Again, that's not Jesus' response. Some will become angry when their temples fall. Some will become resentful and fight back. And others will say, this is God's will, or maybe this is God's punishment. And many will look for easy answers and quick fixes. Something that will prop up the old structures and try to make things the way they used to be. <coughs> Again, these are not Jesus' response. Jesus' response is just the opposite. Be still. Be quiet, Jesus said. Do not be led astray by those who say they come in my name. And do not allow your life to be controlled or determined by fear. Do not listen to the many voices that would cause you to run and go after them. In fact, Jesus says, do not go after them. He says, endure, be faithful, be steadfast, persevere. Here and now. 
And Jesus is calling us to be present and faithful in whatever circumstances we find ourselves. And if we cannot find God here, sisters and brothers, in our present circumstances, even in the midst of all those temples of our lives that have fallen down, we will not find God anywhere if we cannot find Him in the present. The place of fallen temples is a place in which God, speaking through the prophet Isaiah, declares, I am about to create a new heaven, a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create a new Jerusalem as a city of joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people, and no more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it, or the cry of distress. These are the promises that are being fulfilled through God in our lives, through the endurance and persevere that we express in our faith in Him. By endurance, by hanging in there as a church, as a community, for one another. By being present here where we share a word and sacrament. We gain our lives and we save our souls. And Jesus is calling us to that kind of virtual stability. We are to remain fully present, not just partially present. Here some days and not other days. We need to be here for our church sisters and brothers. We need to be here for one another. That is what our faith informs us. That's what our Lord informs us, no matter how uncomfortable life may be. And in doing so, we discover that God has always been with us. In the changes, the chances, and, the, and all the chaos of life. In the pain, and in the loss, and the disappointment, and the diagnosis, and in the destruction of all our temples that have fallen. Endurance, perseverance, stability are the ways in which we offer God the fallen stones of our very lives, of our temples that have fallen. And when we offer God those fallen stones of our temples, stone by stone, God rebuilds our lives. Stone by stone, God restores the original beauty of our life and the beauty of the world. Stone by stone, new temples arise out of the rubble. And stone by stone, we become the temple of God. In fact, we no longer need temples. We no longer need them. We are the temple. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, Jesus tells us. And that is a story that needs to be told, sisters and brothers. That is our opportunity to testify and tell the world about the saving love of Jesus Christ. And we can all tell that story of the day that our temple was destroyed. And too often, however, we believe and live as if the end of the story is coming to just that, the end. And it will be the end of the story if we run away. If we scapegoat and respond with anger or try to put it back together like it used to be. But you see, it doesn't have to be the end of the story, does it? It doesn't have to be the end of all those structures that give our life meaning, including our church. Because you see, the greater story is how we discover our God next to us in the temple ruins of our lives. <coughs> And how stone by stone, God has rebuilt what we cannot rebuild ourselves. Yesterday as I attended the workshop for Luther Vitality in the Luther Churches in Miami-Dade and Broward County, I heard a very sad statistic. I don't know what it is for Roman Catholics or Episcopalians or Methodists or Presbyterians, but there was a research study that was done that said, you know how many times a Lutheran has gone out and shared the good news and told somebody else about Jesus? Once every 23 years. Sisters and brothers, I'm telling you, we have stories to tell. We got work to do. We have work to do in this church. We have work to do in our lives. We have stories that tell where God has rebuilt our lives. Stone by stone, you've experienced and you have those stories. In response to all the endurance and perseverance that you have expressed through your faith in Jesus. 
And it's an ongoing story that never stops. It's, it's an ongoing story of God recreating life out of all the losses and ruins of our lives. A story of God rejoicing and delighting His people. You, His very creation, each one of you being a beautiful part of that creation. This story is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to you. And it's a real sacred and true story. It is a story that actually I will conclude my message with this morning. As many of you know, my, path, my father was a pastor in the Lutheran Church for over 40 years before he passed. And I'm going to share with you a token of his writing of years past that talked about the story that we need to tell. The story of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to you. Please listen carefully. There's a sweet story translated for us, but writ a long, long time ago. The Gospel according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John of Christ and his mission to love. We read and admire the Gospel of Christ with its love so unfailing and true. But what do people say? And what do they do and think of the Gospel according to you? It's a wonderful story, that gospel of love, as it shines in the Christ's life divine. And oh, that it's true, might be told again in the story of your life and mine. Unselfishness mirror in every scene. Love blossoms on every side. And back from its vision, the heart comes to tell the wonderful goodness. You, sisters and brothers, are writing a letter each day. Take care that your writing is true. Tis the only gospel that some people will ever read. The gospel according to you. Sisters and brothers, tell that story. Let that story be heard from St. Mark's and all who are associated with this congregation. Tell that story over and over to yourself and trust that story. Proclaim it to all you see and then go live that story. How great thou art. What a beautiful story. The endurance and your perseverance that tell you that your life has always had the Lord involved rebuilding our lives and restoring the original beauty of the world. And God bless you in your telling. My prayers are with you as you tell it, as we tell it together as a congregation. And offer those stones to God so he can rebuild your life and the beauty of the world. And let me tell you, as you tell your story, as you tell your story, not one hair of your head will perish by your endurance your perseverance, your faith in God, you will gain your soul and live today, now, and forevermore. And as God's people together, we say, Amen. Amen. Our nation, please rise. And may the peace of God, which passes all you can understand, keep your hearts and minds. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord.